and that is also impossible. Right. Why is at the Salsul Fil Maldi impossible? We now understand now the Dawr or the never ending circle. It's obvious that's that's impossible. But why is an infinite regress impossible? And this is useful for us when we establish the pre the necessary pre eternality of Allah and also useful in establishing the origination of the world. Because some people would say, okay, what if the world was preceded by another world? that was preceded by another world, that was preceded by another world forever in the past. We say that is impossible. That is, this is called infinite regress and it's impossible. Why is it impossible? Let, you know, allow me to give you, uh, you know, to, to illustrate this through an analogy. And I believe this is what is uh, suitable for uh, the level of this course. Let's assume that I want to borrow from Zaid. I want to borrow a dollar. So I go to Zaid. I ask him for a dollar. He does not have a dollar. So he says, wait, let me ask my sister Aisha. He goes, he asks his sister Aisha, do you have a dollar? She says, I don't have a dollar. Let me ask my friend Fatima. She goes to, uh, to her friend Fatima. Do you have a dollar? She says, no, let me ask my father. Khalid, she goes to her father, Khalid, do you have a dollar? He says, no, let me ask my colleague at work, Amr. And he goes to Amr, do you have a dollar? He says, no, I don't have a dollar. Let me ask my wife, Zainab. He goes to his wife, Zainab, do you have a dollar? She says, I don't have a... If we go like that infinitely, will I ever get my dollar? The answer is no. The answer is no. But if at some point I receive my dollar, that means that this chain of asking of seeking to acquire a dollar ended at somebody who has a dollar who gave it to Zainab, Zainab gave it to Amr, Amr gave it to Khalid, Khalid gave it to Fatima, Fatima gave it to Aisha, Aisha gave it to Zaid, Zaid gave it to me. But if I never get my dollar, then I apologize, but as long as I get my dollar, it means that the chain stopped somewhere. If I don't get my dollar, that means that the chain is going in the past, right? But I will never get my dollar. If it goes in the past, if it goes forever, I will never get my dollar. If I get my dollar, it means that the chain stopped, right? So again, the chain, if it ended, I will receive my dollar. If it never ends, I will never receive my dollar. So far, so good. The dollar is a metaphor, or is a, in this analogy, is a metaphor for what? For existence. We exist because there is, some, there is a generation that existed before us. If we say this world exists, it's because there is a world that existed before it. Right? And each one depended on the other. So we depended on the generation before us, the generation before us depended on the generation before them, and so on and so forth. What is common between all of these parts of the chain that each one is dependent? Like the dollar example, each one of them is in need and does not have the dollar. Right. So, this is what scholars call مَا يَتَسَلْسَلْ لَا يَتَحَصَّلْ Whatever goes infinitely in infinite regress will never come to existence. But the fact that it did come to existence, that means that there was, n there was no infinite regress. The chain started somewhere. The chain began at a certain point. The entire of the chain is dependent. And the reason this chain came to existence, the cause for this chain to come to existence, cannot be also dependent because if he is dependent, he would be part of the chain. And then the question will rise again, did the chain stop or did it not? The fact that we actually exist is a proof that the chain stopped. And the chain stopped at someone who is not dependent on anybody, who is not in need to anybody. And this is the meaning of necessary existence. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his existence is from himself. 
his existence is necessary. So therefore, his existence is pre-eternal. It did not have a beginning. If it had a beginning, then that would mean he's part of the chain. And that is impossible. So necessary existence necessitates that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is pre-eternal. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his existence is from himself. Allah subhanahu is meaning his self-existent. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala um, was not preceded by non-existence. His, his, his existence was never preceded by non-existence. It is impossible for his existence to be preceded by non-existence. His existence cannot be impossible because it's necessary. His existence cannot be possible because if it's possible, then it has a beginning and that is also impossible. So we have established thus far that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his existence is necessary and his pre-eternality is necessary. And from these two, we also establish the necessary endlessness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because if he's necessarily existent and he was never preceded by non-existent existence, his existence cannot be followed by his non-existence. Why is that? Why is that his existence cannot be followed by non-existence? Well, because if his, if, if his existence is followed by non-existence, that would, that would mean that his existence was actually possible, not necessary. But we already established that it's necessary. So whatever is necessary cannot become possible. And this is what scholars refer to as مَا وَجَبَ قِدَمُ مُسْتَحَالَ عَدَمُ The one whose pre-eternality is necessary, his non-existence is impossible. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Rahman, Surah number 52, verse number 27, وَيَبَقَى وَجْهُ رَبِّكَ ذُو الْجَلَالِ وَالْإِكْرَامِ But forever will abide by thy sustainer's self, full of majesty and glory. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also said in Surah Al-Hadid, هُوَ الْأَوَّلُ وَالْآخِرُ وَالظَّاهِرُ وَالْبَاطِنُ وَهُوَ بِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ عَلِيمٌ he is the first and the last, and the outward and the inward, and he's the knower of all things. So al awwal refers to the pre-eternality, and the last refers to the endlessness. And both the meaning of pre-eternality and endlessness are actually 